Does, does Abraham know where he's going, according to this passage? No. No. So let's write no. this down here. What other things are necessarily implied? So you have the command to go. If, if, if Abraham goes, what does that imply about Abraham's actions? Okay, great. You're, you're, you're jumping the gun. That's really good. So let, let's, let's work backwards. So we're going to get to faith. But before faith, if he goes necessarily, if I obey, a, I just give it away, right? He has to obey. There's o- obedience to the command. Iba. So we have obedience to the command. And then necessarily, if you're obeying the command, that means that you are trusting and submitting to the one who gives the command. Yeah, sir, I would like to clarify if does uh, did Abraham know know God already before this talking with God? Uh, before this when God uh, the Lord uh, talked to to Abraham. So explicitly, explicitly we don't know. For sure, implicitly or the inference, I would say, I would say that there is a relationship. There is because because remember, Abraham is from Shem, Noah, and ultimately Adam. So there is a line of faith. Mm-hmm. There is a line of belief. Mm-hmm. So I would say that 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 that, that there is a knowledge or relationship. Um, but but so so we wouldn't want to deny that. But the whole point here. So let's let's take this next level though, okay? The Lord reaches out to Abraham and there's no implication at least the narrative is teaching us there's no implication that what I'm trying to get is this is a one-way street in the sense that God reaches out mm-hmm. to Abraham. Abraham doesn't reach out to God. Okay? And after the fall, it's only through God's grace that man mm-hmm. knows and has a relationship with God. Let's write this down. This implies a grace from god okay now what else does this imply so we have he does not know where he's going that's a that's a that's a good implication that's a good interpretation there has to be obedience to the command he's trusting and submitting to the one who gives the command okay because if you're going to obey a command number 1 you have to accept that he's in authority and number two, you have to believe that what he's telling you is right, and then you have to follow through and obey. This is incredibly powerful. And so let's just put in parentheses here, faith. So these are these are necessarily good, let's put here implications here. Implications, or we can say interpretations. So we have this command here, okay? And we're going to come back. So we've made some inferences here. We're going to come back and and really tie a bow on this, okay? So we still want to be thinking about what the New Testament revelation says about this. So we want to be thinking about that, okay? Next we see here, Looking at verses two and three, I know that I think Jesus may have been, I don't, I don't, maybe you weren't in Bible's big story. I know Kea was. What are the, there are several actions here. Let's, let's label the actions. If, if you guys want to give me the actions, what are the actions in verses two and three? We'll make. We'll bless. We'll bless. We'll curse. And the last one is. Shall be blessed. I'll be blessed. Excellent. Who, who is the actor? So we saw here, actually the actor here would be, would be Abram, right? He's the one that's commanded to do something. What about down here? Who is the actor? The Lord. Yeah. The Lord. Excellent. So we have one, obviously he's present here. Three, four, five. Notice this, that shall be blessed. 
all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is the object, right? They're the recipients. So this is the object people. And um, this is the action. This is the action. 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 But coming down here, Diba, the, the one who bl is blessing, right? So it can't be Abraham, right? Because Abraham is here, or we'll see who, who the fulfillment is. This is the, the sphere, or we could say, I actually prefer the, the agent. Okay. I mean, there's debate here how you understand this precise word. Either one will be acceptable. Maybe I would choose agent, but this, but this at least in this original context. So we're looking at both temporal and eternal. Okay. So there's going to be more than the, the, the you in the original context is at least here. We'll see another you will we'll clarify you is Abram. If Abram is the, the agent or the sphere shall be blessed is the act. The object is the families. Who must the actor be? Is this not the Lord? So, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. So, I will bless all the families of the earth by you or in you. Wow. So, Malakas, right? So, Malakas. Okay. And, and later we're going to see that really the in you is we could refer to this as loins. And this is really a reference to later we'll see Christ. So we'll come back to that. I just want to, the in you does not, if in our interpretation here, we can't say it's just Abraham. And this is why New Testament is so fundamental. And this is why that we have to be so careful as we interpret the word of God, that we're considering what the Holy Spirit has revealed to us in later subsequent passages. We have here pri primarily the actor here. The actor is, is the Lord. And so what's going on really in all of these is if we're going to look at the these big statements, if you have the Lord saying something, so let's write this down here. So this is also, as we look at this, I want this to be a lesson on how we identify um, relationships. So when I'm coming back up here, looking at relationships here, sentence type. So we're looking at the comprehensive sentence type. Okay. So if we have, so if we have um, for identifying sentence types, number one, we have God is the actor. We have a future action. These two should infer what? What type of sentence type should we looking at these? You could actually also look this up on the website. If if everyone can see here, what type of of action of sentence type should we define as I will make a great nation? What 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 type should we define as? Promise. Is it yeah. a promise? Yeah. Go ahead, Kaya. I was thinking of divine declaration, with, but yeah, I, I wasn't yeah. there in the promise yet. <laughs> yeah, no. So divine declaration. So we could, I mean, ultimately there could be more. Okay. So the divine declaration could be positive or negative. Promise is really yeah. assurance, right? So we'll say promise. That includes divine de declaration. Yeah. So, so I think maybe we can't have an infinite number of categories. So if you wanted to add, you could do divine promise. I'm, I'm fine yes. with that. That's probably the best because promise is more specific than declaration. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so let's, let's do this here. So what we'll do divine promise. Number one, number two, number three. Number four, number five, and number six. But it could be also a warning, sir, because there's there, there's a curse, right? The, so now let's look at the relationships between, right? So what's the relationship between I will make and I will bless? For these relationships here, what what would it be? Yeah, hold on. So we're the, looking at we're looking at this and this is this will be the the number one key giveaway if we have a, a a connecting word okay so between here and here the cause and effect we're going to come back to that okay jesus because we also have to look at from here to here okay okay all right but so from here to here 
I will make a great nation and I will bless you. Okay. We could say this is a, a series, right? If you're looking at, and I will go to the store and I will buy groceries. So this could be either yeah. a series or this could be a progression, right? Each one builds Which... upon another. So I actually prefer progression. I think they're building. So, yeah. yeah. So then we have again here. And now if we don't have, and we have to think purely logically. Okay. If we don't have the conjunction, we have to, but there's going to be some type of relationship and maybe there's no connection. Okay. So coming to here to here, I'm going to say also, this is a, a progression coming from here to here, also a progression. And so that's why when you come to here, Jesus, you have a, an, and so actually, and him who dishonors, but him who dishonors. So actually the, and it also could be, but, and that's even in English, we could, we could, we could infer, but him who dishonors, I will curse. So really there's two possibilities. I have to think about this. I was, I was so sure before that it should have been a progression, but you could also see here an adversative relationship. So I will bless the one who blesses. So there's, there's a contrast here, right? An adversative just means contrast. And actually, hey Seuss, I'm I'm liking I'm liking your decision here. I'm going to change this. I rarely do this. Let's let's do, let's do this as a warning. A divine warning. And then this is the last promise. And so this here again returns to. Returns to progression. Now let's go back and let's look at this and okay. Let's just look at this and here to confirm what's going on here. So the reason why I translated and or but, let's go to Step Bible. All right, let me just change this page here. So we're going to search Genesis 12. So here we go. So let's just let's just zoom this up here now. Let's do a parallel here. Let's add a parallel. So I'm going to do a new panel. Let's use Hebrew. Okay, here we go. Okay, so maybe this will work. You don't have to know Hebrew. Okay, so if I go to, if I go to, so here, so let's go down here. This is probably better here. Okay, so if I go to, so everyone saw how I did that. I just went to here to, to this text over here on the left, and then I added English, and then I added the Hebrew, and I just, I just, the, the ancient, the ancient toggle here. Okay. So if I look if I look down here at um, Genesis twelve, um, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. If you go to this word here, see this is the verb. But if I go to this this first prefix, you can see this is a vav at the bottom, and. So I'm just going to click on this. So in the future, whenever you see like and then and then and then. You just click on that. That's that's a um a connective word. Okay, here we go. So you can see here. So look at the meaning here. Can I blow this up here? Can everyone I it's hard to see. Let me see if I can blow this up. You see the and or the but, right? The but everyone can see that. Really, that's so you can translate and but or even now. Okay, so if we come up here, look up here, see this. Uh, va yomer. Va yomer is actually, um, and he said, and they translate it. Now the Lord said, okay. Is everyone tracking there with me? So this vav here, we need to do a Hebrews class. We need to do a Hebrews class one day. But what I'm trying to get at is that you could translate. So let's 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 be clear here. When you see and in the Old Testament at the beginning, okay. So. So verse three, I will bless those who curse and him whom, whenever you see the and, just know, make yourself a note. In Hebrew Old Testament, when you see the and, typically it can be translated and, now, but, okay? Sometimes even too. So let's write this down here. So, so if we're looking at a word study for and, the, the vav is going to be either this this or this this is a this is a hebrew prefix 
okay the translation in reality can always be and now but or even even is clarification okay so just know that all right so so we we so here we're making the decision this should be this should be but and so i like the divine warning so uh jesus you get the gold star all right so what what we have going on here right now is we have this command and then in relationship to the to the command is a define a divine promise and a divine warning in the one instance okay so so what relationship between these two what is the relationship between these two so coming up here looking at the relationship i'm actually going to go with condition because the promises don't come into reality if Abraham doesn't go. Okay, so even though there is an and here, the sense really is that of a condition. And so um, that's one possibility. Jesus, you mentioned cause and effect. You could also consider that as well because the first causes the effect of the second. If If the first event doesn't happen, the second effect doesn't doesn't occur are you tracking there with with that jesus how about result to result you could also see um so this is one possibility this is two and then the third could be action result so maybe maybe the best we want to say here is action result so this is where jesus and for those who are watching on youtube this is not black and white. And someone would say, oh, there's so many categories. How in the world, how in the world could, could all of this be contained here? What we're trying to do is we're trying to objectively make relationships and those things which we would just subconsciously accept or assume, we're just trying to make explicit by, so that we can teach and unpack the meaning. That's all we're doing here. And so there is a, an objectivity and there is a gray area, right? So it could not be greater to lesser there's no way it could be greater or lesser there's no way it could be idea explanation because it's not explaining right so really the three options are cause and effect condition or action result and they're all really saying the same thing one action has to occur before the condition is met an action has to occur that resu results in another there ha there has to be a cause before there's effect so there's there's an overlap here okay is, uh, does that make sense jesus Let's move on here now. Okay. So we have here, let's unpack the promises. Okay. So I will make of you a great nation. So this is a thing. And when we're saying thing, this is an entity. And so this word for nation, the Hebrew word is, is goy. And this really implies several things this conveys some people would say three major concepts number one a government number two a people and number three land and within people it's not simply offspring okay within people there is culture and relationship so or if you want to see culture as a fourth thing that's fine okay when god is making a great nation of abram he will he will produce a great nation this is more than just one aspect okay it's referring to government people and a land and so what is a what is a broader so so nation might work that's more contemporary what is a so what's bigger than territory territory is still not comprehensive thinking about the commissioning of of, of adam in genesis 1 what was that big word that we used dominion right dominion was the uh, yeah dominion yeah so we could say dominion or that what's really easy for us to understand is kingdom yeah, kingdom. That really encapsulates it and gives us a better significance 
uh, a better understanding of the significance than simply nation. And the craziest thing here is that in, in Hebrew, the, especially the Old Testament, goy and the, and the Hebrew word bam, bam laka is, is kingdom. Okay, so these two are synonymous. So obviously, God in his wisdom and providence in the writing of, of Scripture chose Goy. But we need to understand Goy in the idea of kingdom. And we're going to see later that that's really ultimately what we are given in Hebrews 12, what Abraham has promised. It's an eternal kingdom. And that's what Christ is fulfilling. He's fulfilling the original ma dominion mandate of, of man. So we need to be thinking about this word and focusing on the word kingdom. You have a command. And so coming back up here, Deba, there's also in relationship to this, there is blessing, right? In both Adam and also Noah, there is this blessing attached. And there's also, there's also uh, promises, right? promises as well look down here <laughs> so we have promises i mean we have blessing we have cursing and then we have these warnings and these these divine promises here okay so this is saturated although the word covenant is not used the context is saturated with covenantal components and terminology and the cursing aspect then brings upon the idea of of judgment and punishment and how is it that god can curse without a covenant right and so thinking about this this implies if, if God can just curse someone who is dishonoring Abraham. So this is the description. If God can curse them for dishonoring his person, this again, the implication is, is this just? And the reason why this is just is because the Lord God is the creator, possessor of heaven and earth, and all creatures are bound to obey him. Okay, and so this is this is the judicial basis for this being just. And, and and you're saying, okay, Tim, obviously we agree with this. Fair enough. But a lot of people outside of Christianity or outside that's questioning the inspiration, authority, and inerrancy of the scriptures would say, see, this is where God is capricious. He's evil because he's just, he's attacking human autonomy and saying, if you don't submit to his, to his promised one, he's going to judge and curse you. And that's not fair. And that only works. And that's only inconsistent if we don't have this larger understanding here. If the Lord God is the creator, the possessor of heaven and earth, and all creatures are bound to obey him because of, of covenant, then he can still curse. He can still judge. And this also brings in the clarity that even though there is common grace, in the Noahic covenant and a promise that he won't, he will withhold judgment. God can still judge and curse. This only pertains to universal, immediate judgment through a flood. Is everyone tracking there? So this is to add clarification to what we discussed last week in the common grace and the first administration of the Noahic covenant. It's not to say that God will never judge. 
it's not to say that God won't judge a, a nation or a people. It is to say that he's going to withhold, he's going to withhold that eternal judgment that's coming one day. That eternal universal judgment. But that still will come. Okay, is everyone? Let's finish this next week because there's so much more to add. I don't want to rush it because it's late for you guys. L l let me close on a, on a word of a, an, an encouragement here. L let's go to New Testament Revelation, and we're going to continue with this next week. And let, let's look at our implications here, okay? So let's go to, let's go to Hebrews 11, verses 8, okay? So we've made, we've made implications, interpretations here that, number one, he doesn't know. Obedience is implied. Trusting and submitting is applied, and this is from the grace of God, okay? Now, an objective, someone who's claiming to be objective but doesn't have the authority of Scripture, the inspiration of Scripture, the fact that there can be meaning given by God that isn't readily apparent because the text just doesn't talk about that. So this is not a reinterpretation. This is, a, this is unclear. And we need to wait to see full revelation to understand the full implications because there is divine and human authorship. So look at what New Testament revelation says. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called out to go to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. Are you kidding me? So looking at now Hebrews. 11, 8, uh, let's just look at 8, just for tonight, 8. Number one, what the author of Hebrews says is, fundamentally, the instrument is faith, by faith. Number two, there is obedience. Number three, he did not know where he was going. So even though it's implied in a place that I will show you, we now know that it wasn't until he arrived or was 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 near to arriving that he knew. He literally went by faith without knowing. This is a clarification uh explanation. Okay? And then look at the four, fourth point here. If we were tempted to think there's a condition, right? There's a cause and effect. There's an action and a conclusion, okay? And this is where, this is going to be very malakas, okay? This is, this is going to be very reformed, okay? But it's exegetical. He was to receive an inheritance. Now, do you earn inheritances? You're given, right? So, so, so yes, given. given. Yeah, yeah. So the last point is that the, the promises point to inheritance. He was to receive an inheritance. Okay, so all of the promises, and especially the, the land, you have land, you have nation, you have blessing. We can summarize that. So let's be clear here. Going into a land is going to result in these promises. But we can summarize that as an inheritance. And so in one sense, a hundred percent, Abraham has to obey. There's a condition. There's a cause and effect. There's an act and a result. But the way that it's summarized here is an inheritance. Inheritances are not earned. They're given. Okay? And, and going back to the confession, the idea of giving is there is a, a giver and a gift and a recipient. Okay? And so this, what this is, the full implication here is that what's being implied here is the idea of grace. Unmerited favor. So, this does not deny faith. This does not ob ob deny obedience. But the broader category, if, if Hebrews is going to summarize it as an inheritance, 
That's what's really going on behind the scenes. God has chosen Abraham not because of anything he's done, because of his purposes. He's given him a command. Abraham has to obey by faith. And then he's going to receive an inheritance. But this is not merit. This is grace. And so we see in other New Testament passages, the work, the work behind faith is the Spirit, the Spirit working in us. The work behind obedience is the Spirit. And so there was a lot of things left out here, okay? But we could not say that Abraham's work, Abraham's obedience is him earning his salvation, is him earning his inheritance. Is everyone tracking there with me? Hebrews 12, 1 to 3 is unclear on that. Later revelation mm, yeah. clarifies. So this is where redemption and revelation, they are in a chain. They are inseparable and must be considered. You cannot separate revelation from redemption. So here, the, many people will use this. Let's go back here. Many people will use this passage here to emphasize a, a work, some form of works-based salvation. Deba, the Catholics will do this. That's the question. Did, did, did Abraham earn it? Or if Abraham wasn't faithful, did God take a risk? Right? Here we know now there is no risk. Salvation is by grace through faith. Grace is working behind the scenes to empower the faith. And God is sovereign in this. Yeah, I will ag agree with that, sir, because I will, I mean, I, I agree with what you are saying, yet, sir. Because uh, if you continue reading the Genesis 12, uh, starting in 4, uh, for me, there's things that here, uh, Ab Abraham uh, disobey yeah. in, some, in some ways. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. yeah. Because very clear yeah. in the command, in the first in chapter, in verse 1, uh, the other translation is leave or go from your country. It means for me, I, I, in my own interpret, you might, he must leave everything and mm. go. But if you read uh, uh, verse 4, Abram went as the Lord had told him, but he bring Lot and his wife, right? So, yes. somehow. <laughs> yeah. I never saw that before. Yeah, no. So, now, there's yeah. the, now there is debate because they would say that I have to. It's all by grace. It's yeah. all God's no. work. Yeah. yeah. Not total, yeah. Not all the merit. Yeah. It's not merit by by the because Abraham just obey or my obey. goodness, I never saw that before, and people will give reasons as to why Lot went, but but Jesus, I think that's a phenomenal observation. Let me think about that. I I I don't, I, I want to think about that, but I I actually I, I I'm leaning on agreeing with what you're saying. That is, I've never heard that before, but I think that's actually a phenomenal statement because it says, so Abraham went as the Lord told him. You could say, and Lot went with him. Or but lot went with him, but he's an extended family. You're, I think you're right. I, I think you're right there, and 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 it really emphasizes the grace. So, Jesus, that is phenomenal. That is a phenomenal observation. My goodness, excellent. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So let's continue this next week. Behind all of this is grace and the gospel, because as it's being pointed out, Abraham goes in faith. He doesn't obey perfectly, and God still is with him, and God still brings about the, the promises that he, he gave. So if you think about it, he has an illegitimate child with Hagar. There's multiple times where he doubts. There's times where he lies about his wife. There's, there's sin throughout. And so in this, I think there should be incredible assurance for us because we are going to fall. God is not looking for a perfect faith. He's looking for a living faith powered by the Holy Spirit and a daily faith, daily repentance. And so, my goodness, so, so malakas. Let's close in prayer. 
let's rest in these promises and let's just come down here. This is the proclamation of the gospel that God will use Abraham through his seed, Jesus Christ, to bless all the families of the earth. And the way by which he's going to bless them is he's going to send his son to be born under the law as an offspring of Abraham, of David, of Adam, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to live the perfect life that no one lives. He's going to earn righteousness, a state of righteousness that's going to be given to us. He's going to die on a cross and pay the guilt, the penalty of sins that we all have in Adam, that we all commit personally. That includes Abraham's sin. Abraham is believing in this promise, and this promise is going to save him. And this is not just temporal salvation. It's not just a temporal inheritance. It's an eternal inheritance that we're already seeing coming to fruition. This is pointing us to the greater reality that that the gospel is here. It's 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 saving Abraham, and it's within. So we can say the gospel. We can see redemption. We can say covenant of grace. Let's go ahead and let's close in prayer.